All right, today was finally the day. It's taken NASCAR a couple of days, but they have finally came out with the penalty report, and there is a brand new president. Let's talk about the Dylan and Logano penalties. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. I mentioned at the top today we finally got the penalty report for Joey Logano and Austin Dillon. But right before I get to that, I want to go over this pretty briefly. Right before I started recording this, news has come out that on Monday night, Kurt Busch was charged with the second DWI. He did get one back in 2005. I'm mentioning this pretty briefly because this is not really the stuff I really want to talk about for the most part on this channel, but I am doing NASCAR news, so I have to report it to at least a certain degree. I did make a short going a little bit more in to the information about Kurt Busch's DWI in North Carolina on Monday. Since recording that short right here on my YouTube channel, Kurt Busch has released a statement, and I'll put that up here on the screen. You may pause the video and take a look at the statement he has made. I will be putting an article in the comments really going over the incident with Kurt Busch. All I'm really going to say in this video about it is first of all do not drive under the influence of anything and also that I am being a, a big Kyle Busch fan I'm also a very big Kurt Busch fan and I just I hope everything is all right with Kurt it's been a very tough couple of years for Kurt and I hope everything's good with him and he's able to move on from this but I wish Kurt Busch and his family and everybody the best through this. All right, now let's get to these penalties. I know most of you want to hear about the Austin Dillon stuff, but we're going to quickly go over the Joey Logano stuff on pit road because I didn't really see how bad it was until maybe Monday, Monday night, how bad it was that onboard camera. Because I saw the side view and I'm like, all right, I've seen stuff like this on pit road before. He shouldn't be doing that and he probably should get some sort of fine but then seeing essentially the POV view essentially is on board camera for Joey Logano and it's it looks horrible literally crowd of people jumping out of the way the official running down pit road pointing at him saying you just you can't you can't do that you cannot do that Joey Logano made a huge error lack of judgment all he saw was red. Whatever you really want to say, it was completely, completely wrong and completely uncalled for and it, it shouldn't have happened. I would also like to know, because I know it's going to be said in the comments and I do agree, NASCAR does play a role in this as well. I don't think people, like non-essential people, obviously officials should probably be on pit lane, but other than officials, I don't think there should be pretty much any non-essential people on on a live pit road while there's still cars moving around, let alone a young child. I, I just don't think that's, that's just not smart. So I know that NASCAR for sure will be taking a look at that and maybe some officials might even get in trouble for what has happened when it comes to people over the pit wall. Because I don't I don't think that's necessarily allowed, but I think NASCAR maybe over the last couple of years have gotten really, really lax about that. And this incident right here proves that they shouldn't be so lax about this because you're going to have drivers that are just seeing pure red at some of the at the end of some of these races. That being said, Joey Logano 100% deserved to get a fine, but honestly, fifty thousand dollars is a decent amount. It's not. It's not chump change, but I, I really think they should have really sent a message out there because this was really dangerous. This could have been really, really bad for NASCAR, for Logano, for Penske, for everybody involved with this. Because somebody could have gotten hurt. Somebody really, 
really bad could have gotten badly hurt luckily nobody got hit nobody got hurt but they, they should have really sent a message and i don't think fifty thousand dollars is a big enough message logano is smart enough i i assume logano knows at this point what he did in that moment was wrong and he probably regrets it but fifty thousand dollars is is not enough i'd say a hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand dollars a pretty big fine i put him on probation for the rest of the season as well. Another incident like this, suspend him. I see some people saying that he should be suspended for this incident. I'd say he shouldn't because, first of all, it wasn't on track. He didn't hit any hit any other cars. It was very dangerous, but NASCAR has been pretty lax when it comes to these heat-of-the-moment sort of situations. And like I said, I do not agree with it, and I think he should have gotten a bigger fine but if he does this again, I think he should definitely 100% get suspended because at that point, he's he's a danger to everybody. All right, now let's talk about the Austin Dillon stuff because we have a decent amount of stuff to go over here. Before we really talk about the penalty, let's go over the incident one more time. So you see at the beginning of this clip, Austin Dillon's maybe three car lengths back, completely sends it into the corner. Didn't even attempt to make the corner. He would have went flying into the wall if Joey Logano wasn't there. And overall, the way I looked at this initial move going into turn three on Logano, I thought it, it was a little bit much. I def I'm i definitely okay with rubbing and people sending it in there, but I don't know if I've ever seen somebody send it from that far back. I know Logano sent it from a pretty decent way on... Byron but I, I do think it was a little much enough to penalize him or anything like that I'd say no like I said I don't agree with the initial move on Logano I'm 100% for rubbing his race and if he just sends it in there maybe like a half a car length back and got him in the bumper I probably would have been screaming and yelling go Dylan go because I've said it on the channel I'm a big big supporter of Austin Dillon and honestly, on Sunday night, he kind of disappointed me personally. I know that that, that doesn't matter to Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon don't care about my opinion. But it, it disappointed me to see what I saw. Okay, so we're, we're starting with that. And overall, it, I, I'd say it's fair. We've seen stuff like that before. I think the big problem for me comes in when it's a second incident. I think it's one thing to maybe send it in on one guy but do I've heard I've heard people say it on a couple podcasts and a couple of YouTube videos. What he did was video gameish. It was NASCAR heatish. I guess you could say what Austin Dillon did off that corner. He sent it in there on Logano. Is like I need to win this race. I'm taking you out. And then he noticed that Hamlin was going to end up beating him because of him sending it so deep into the corner he wasn't going to make it off the corner with any speed so he was like you know what i'm just gonna whip it left and take him out and before any of you say it i know a lot of you are gonna say oh hamlin wrecked himself oh hamlin wrecked himself he came all he came all the way up into him he would put him in the wall uh, I've, I've seen so many people say that and that is just I, I'm, I'm gonna say it frank here that is idiotic that is completely idiotic to say i'm sorry if you're offended but usually I leave these things up to opinion. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Dylan just flat out turned him. Honestly, I should throw this hat off because then all of y'all are going to say that I'm a Hamlin fan. I do like Hamlin. I wouldn't say Hamlin's my favorite driver, but I do. I do like Hamlin. But does and I I like Dylan. I just I really like Dylan. But Hamlin took a normal exit off the corner. He he came off the corner like he's came off the corner the whole entire race. Like how anybody has came off the corner the whole entire race on that bottom line. I think I had someone on TikTok say, if, hey, if you look at the overhead view, Hamlin clearly comes up into him. I'm, I'm not going to deny the fact Hamlin comes up the track, but that is the natural racing line. And he is not putting... Dylan was saying he's going to, oh, he was going to put me in the wall if... Like, he was saying something like that, and that's idiotic of him to say. Because Dylan is nowhere near the wall, and he clearly turns the wheel all the way to the left. I've seen the videos. I've seen the SMT. Uh, SMT has good... I'm going to just quickly go on a very quick thing about SMT. SMT is 
a good thing but a bad thing. For incidents like this, where you just kind of want the nail in the coffin, I think ST is a great thing. Most most time, I think it's an unnecessary tool, and that's one of the reasons why we see a lot of cars. So even in these races, sorry, little little side tangent. But that that is overall where my big problem was with this was because a lot of people are liking to compare. Oh, Logano's done this before. Oh, Hamlin's done this before. I've seen these guys definitely get aggressive at the end of these races. Definitely send it in the corner, putting people in the wall. I've definitely seen that. But we've seen that from almost every driver. I can't think of it. And if someone in the comments can tell me, I would be glad to hear it. And I would, I would love to learn some new history about NASCAR that I didn't know before. But I have never seen a driver completely send it in to the last corner and take out the leader. And then also take out the person that was about to pass him on the inside. I've never seen somebody take out two leaders in one corner to win a race. The closest thing I could ever see, I I can compare to this is Brian Vickers at Talladega on the backstretch. And I, I still don't know if that was intentional or not. It was clear here Austin Dillon was going to do what he had to do to win the race. And I, I get that statement as well. The system does play a part in this. The playoff system, the win and you're in, them taking away top 30 in points. In my opinion, it should have been top 25 in points are eligible for win and you're in. At this point, it doesn't matter. Anybody, If anybody wins, they're in as long as they're competing for the championship. But that does not excuse Austin Dillon's actions. Like I said, he lost a lot of respect from me. I know for a fact he lost a lot of respect, if not all respect, from Hamlin, Logano, and probably a lot of other drivers in the garage. I just think something like that was kind of over the line. He didn't intentionally wreck just one person. I don't know if he necessarily intentionally tried to wreck Logano. He definitely tried to get into him. He might have just tried to push him off the track. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. But that was a clear intent to wreck on Hamlin for sure. He right hooked him into the wall. And I'm not going to say that he should get suspended or something because it is a short track. And I don't feel like it was all. It's obviously not safe. But it's not dangerous like a mile and a half track, so I'm not on the on the bandwagon of Austin Dillon should get suspended either. But he should not be in the playoffs for those moves. So I 100% agree with the penalty, which we'll finally actually get to the penalty after all of my ranting. You can clearly saw, tell I'm still very upset about this. That I just didn't. It was overall the best race I've seen at Richmond in maybe 15 years. It still wasn't like a barn burner of a race. But it all got ruined in just a couple of seconds. And I wish NASCAR made the call on Sunday night instead of waiting till Wednesday. But this is setting a brand new president. So I, I guess I kind of understand it. They wanted to make sure they did everything the right way. And I was really happy about the way Elton Sawyer came out with the penalty. The penalty being he, he lost his playoff eligibility. Austin Dillon is no longer eligible for the NASCAR playoffs. He does get to keep the trophy. Demolition Dillon gets to keep the paperweight of the Virginia State trophy. So congrats to him. He also was docked 25 points. So I, he's fallen back down to 31st in points. He came into the race 32nd. He would have left 26th in points with a playoff spot as well, which would automatically bump him up to the top 16. Just because he's lost his playoff eligibility for this win it does not mean that he can't go and win at Daytona or win at Michigan or Darlington and lock up a spot into the playoffs Austin Dillon still is eligible to do that as long as he do as long as he does things kind of in the right way like I said I'm not against aggression and bumping and running or even running a guy over every once in a while as long as it's done in the proper way like I remember when Logano, like a lot of people bring up the Logano and William Byron at Darlington. I remember when I saw that, I was pissed. I was very upset. I, I also don't like, like Logano very much. I was very, very upset in the moment. And looking back on it, I still am kind of upset. Because that's not real racing, I'd say. But at the same time, stuff like that has happened a lot ever since 1999. When Dale Earnhardt 
rattled Terry Labonte's cage. And I made a video about that just last week, right before the race, which is funny. Take a look at that if you want. And that's a good history lesson for you. Ever since then, NASCAR has kind of changed a little bit when it comes to aggression. And I think the aggression we've seen since 1999 is perfect. And that's what I want. But what Austin Dillon did was pass the line in my mind and I think in a lot of other people's minds as well. And there's definitely a crowd of you who don't agree with that. And that's, that's perfectly fine to have your opinion. But don't go out there spewing that NASCAR has always allowed stuff like this. They've allowed aggression. They've allowed drivers sending it into the corner and doing certain things. But blatantly wrecking two different drivers and two different incidents. It's not like the Brian Vickers incident where I mentioned earlier where he hit one guy and ended up taking them both out. He took one out by sending it in the corner and then he whipped the car left and right hooked Denny Hamlin right into the outside wall. And it's a desperate moves by a desperate man, like I said in my post-race video. And it's just... It's, it's, it's a disgrace. It's disgraceful what he did, what Austin Dillon did. And I'm very interested to see his reaction. We've already seen Richard Childress Racing's reaction. They are going to be appealing this penalty. They're very disappointed with this penalty. I'm also going to pull up the rule, essentially, that NASCAR found for to make this call. Because I don't agree with what some people are saying that NASCAR is making rules throughout the season. I've said it here before, NASCAR kind of just make it up as they go sometimes. And I don't like that they do that. But in this case, I feel like they, they're, they're, in a, they're between a rock and a hard place. I don't think there was a winning scenario for what NASCAR had to decide. This is a very important moment in this sport. And it will be looked back on for many years because... Like I said, it sets a new precedence in the sport and it's a precedence that needed to be set because with Austin Dillon doing this at Richmond and if NASCAR just lets it happen, doesn't say anything, what stops, let's see, let's say for example, because no one, no one seems to like him, let's use Denny Hamlin as an example. What if Denny Hamlin goes into the championship four and coming off the final corner, he does right hooks Kyle Larson into the outside wall and he's the champion. Is everybody going to be okay with that? Everybody going to be fine with that? How about if he drives around at Phoenix Raceway and wrecks his three other competitors during the race? He takes out Christopher Bell in stage one, takes out Kyle Larson in stage two, takes out William Byron in stage three. Like, what, what if he does that? Who knows? Like, he can, he can do whatever at that point if NASCAR doesn't do anything right now about this, in my opinion. This is going to be a big talking point for a very long time, like I said, and I, I want to hear everybody's opinions about it. I'm down to have discussions about it. I don't think I've heard so much people just spewing from the mouth over this incident. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I feel like last week everybody didn't like Austin Dillon, and now that he's made this move, everybody is his biggest defender. And it's really funny. It's really funny because I consider myself an Austin Dillon fan. At this point, I don't know if I do. It really depends on how he reacts. I'm very interested to see how he personally reacts. I don't care about Richard Childress's reaction. I know his reaction to these things. But I'm very interested to see what Austin Dillon has to say about this. And then right before I ask for your thoughts and send it out, I would like to quickly talk about the spotter. NASCAR decided to suspend... The spotter of the number three for Austin Dillon, Brandon Banesh. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, but he has been suspended for three races for what he said on the radio. I'm going to pull up this clip, and you can take a quick listen to what he said on the radio. Keep coming down, 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 at all agree with what he said but we've heard we've definitely heard spotters say some pretty crazy things before like i said i don't agree at all with what he said he shouldn't have been yelling wreck him on the radio no one should be saying wreck anybody on the radio maybe maybe he didn't become a fan in that moment i don't think that's a legitimate excuse for what he said like i said i can't really excuse what he said but i definitely think 
three ray a three race suspension is very harsh for literally just saying wreck them because ultimately austin dillon is the decision maker he's the guy with the wheel in his hands he's the one that ultimately makes the decision if somebody gets wrecked and to suspend a spotter for three races because because of this i think is a little bit overblown honestly i wouldn't be against or for a one race suspension the reason i wouldn't be 100 percent against it because i like i said i do not want spotters necessarily saying this on the radio it, it happens time to time and it's i personally don't think it's that big of a deal but if nascar really doesn't want this said on the radio as well then send a message give a one race suspension Three races is definitely going to send a message. I think that's way too much for literally someone just saying wreck them. Brandon's not the one that decided to right hook Denny Hamlin into the wall. That was Austin Dillon's decision. And I'm not saying to suspend Austin Dillon either. I already went over that. I don't think Austin Dillon should be suspended either. I don't think anybody in this situation should overall be suspended. And I include the spotter in that. But overall, I would be okay with them suspending him for one race but three races i don't agree with that and in the appeal process i hope that's the only thing that's negated from this penalty and that is brandon brandon Benash, like i said sorry if i'm mispronouncing that name gets his suspension lifted because i don't think he deserves a suspension for doing that because we've heard many spotters do wilder things on the radio than that so a quick overview what i think about these penalties real just really quickly the joy logano penalty i agree that he should have gotten fined but i do not think it was it was enough i think he should have been i I think the fine should have been doubled and i think he should have been put on a very very strict post-race essentially probation when it comes to safety the austin dillon and the spotter penalty like i've just went over the spotter penalty. I do not at all agree with the suspension for Brandon. And when it comes to Austin Dillon, I almost 100% agree with his penalty. I do agree that he should be no longer playoff eligible. But I also think NASCAR should come rip that trophy out of Pop Pop's hands. And this comes from Kyle Busch fan. Kyle Busch races for Richard Childress Racing. I don't know if any of you know this. So don't be in the comments saying I'm biased because I know some of you are going to be like saying, oh, he's a Denny Hamlin fan. I'm a Kyle Busch fan, number one. I got an Austin Dillon shirt right over there. You've seen me wear it on this channel. I don't care. This is my opinion, and what Austin Dillon did was disgraceful. Desperate moves by a desperate man. I'll say it again and again. That move was one of the most disgraceful moves I've ever seen in the history of the sport. But give me your thoughts down below. Give me all your thoughts about these penalties that we saw. Maybe even give your opinion or your well wishes for Kurt Busch. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.